Yeah, all this play a part in your WordPress site loading, but do you know what are the main causes for your page to load slowly? Now, honestly, there is no one size fit all answer. What causes my site to load slowly will be different for yours. So whatever that works for me may not work for you. That's why I'm not just going to give you all the tips up front. I want you to know where your site problem is and then we'll tackle it one by one. So before we do anything, I want you to go to this website, tools.pingdom.com. I've left a link in the description as well. So once you click on it, you'll see a page like like this. So to know what is causing your website to load slowly, you need to put in your website's URL here. If your website has an HTTPS, then you want to put it in as well for a more accurate test. And then depending on where most of your audiences are residing, you want to select the nearest testing location to get the most accurate results as well. Now while waiting for this to load, I want to give you a huge bonus tip that will drastically speed up your website. So you definitely want to watch this video all the way to the end. Now this is the performance of my website and if you scroll down here, you can see that the main culprit that is slowing down my website are the images followed by the font. And what we really need to look at is this request by content type because the more requests your site has, the slower it is going to be. And it's affirmed that the images and font of the site are the main causes for my site to load slower. So once you know what is slowing down your site, you can start optimizing it to have the best result. Now, this website does not have any speed caching plugins, nor does it use any page builder for the home page at the time of this recording. So this is the performance of my other site that is using the speed caching plugin and the page builder. Now, it is known that if you use a page builder to build your page, you're going to sacrifice some page speed because they rely heavily on CSS and scripts. So from here, we can see that the font is not the biggest in size, but it sends the most requests followed by the image and then the script. So do you see some commonalities here? The main causes of poor site performance in general are the images, the fonts, and the theme, which are made up of the script and CSS. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same for you as well. These are the three main things to look at for site performance. Now, let me show you one more thing before we go to the speed optimization tips. If you scroll further down, you will see this timeline. This actually tells you precisely what is causing your site to load slowly. So from here, you can see that it takes this amount of time for your web browser like your Google Chrome or Firefox or whatever to locate your domain name server, then it takes this amount of time for your web browser to authenticate your site's SSL certificate. And then it takes this amount of time for your web browser to connect with your web host and for your web host to draw out all the website's data and send it over to your web browser. Now, this is the part where your web host will come into play. If your web host is fast enough, it should load within a second. And in my case, my web host loads at this speed, which is good. According to Pingdom, an ID website load time should be no more than two seconds. So if it takes less than one second for your web host to pass the data to your web browser, it leaves more time for your images, your fonts, your page elements, CSS, and script to load. I hope this makes sense to you. Now, here's the thing you need to understand. Sometimes, even if your site's loading time is ideal, it is within two seconds or sometimes three seconds, it doesn't mean that your performance will have a great A or if you go to Google PageSpeed Insights, you might get a score low than 90. This may be caused by things that are happening within the website and it has nothing to do with the web host. There is a misconception that web hosts solve most site speed problem, but that's actually not true. <sighs> When I first got into this site speed thing, I didn't understand this. I thought that if I changed to an awesome web hosting, my website performance would magically turn to grade A or 90 plus score on PHP Insights. But unfortunately, that's not the case and I learned it the hard way. I even paid thousands of dollars to a web developer to optimize my site and all he does is to install some web caching plugins and do some settings. But in the end, I still couldn't get my site to a grade A performance or a 90 plus score on Google. All that money spent was wasted and it's all because I didn't have the right knowledge. Sorry about the rambling, but I thought you could gain some insights and know the expectations when you are thinking of changing to a new web host. So in case you are thinking of changing your web host, I urge you to identify what are the main causes that are slowing down your website first. Now, if you take a look at these other requests, there are 19 of them on my site. This whole chunk here is the loading time for my fonts. And if I go to page two, these are the loading times for my images. Let me add rows so you can see the big picture. 
picture here. So if I want to optimize my site for performance and speed, it is going to be the images first, then the fonts, then the themes and plugins, because these are the things that I can control. I will not touch my web host unless necessary. Web hosting should be the final frontier for optimization. If you have optimized everything correctly on your website, but you are still not achieving the ideal site speed, then it's time to change your web host. That's my advice to you. So the nine ways for speed optimization, which I'm about to share with you are going to be structured in the same manner. So depending on what your site needs, you can apply the methods accordingly. Before that, I hope you are already getting some value out of this video. And if you did, can you do me a tiny favor and hit the thumbs up button below this video? And most importantly, leave a comment down below and let me know what are the main causes that is slowing down your website. So let's first do image optimization. <laughs> So image optimization, there are four tips I want to share with you, but I need you to understand the fundamentals first. A standard desktop dimension is 1920 by 180 in pixel resolution. And on a mobile phone, let's say that it is iPhone 12, it will be 270 by 554 in pixels. So imagine you have an image that is 5,000 pixels by 5,000 pixels and you uploaded the image to your website. The first thing is the size of the image is going to be extreme and it will take a very long time for your server to load the image on your browser. The second thing is, it takes an extra time for your server to resize the image down to the dimension of the devices, so it is not ideal. My recommendation for the dimension of an image on your site is this. If you want a full-length image that looks good on both desktop and mobile, have it on 800 pixels in width, and for half-length images with text and image side by side, you want to have it at 300 pixels in width. This is a recommendation, but if your WordPress team has a specification, follow that. So so if you resize your image according to this specification, your image size should be less than 400 kilobyte. The ideal size of a web page is below 200 kilobyte, and we are going to address this in a while. The second tip for image optimization is to use JPEG instead of PNG because the size of a JPEG is generally smaller than PNG. But if you want to use an image with a transparent background, then you have no choice but to use PNG. The guideline is to use PNG only when it's necessary. The third tip I have for you is to use an image optimization tool because it can drastically reduce the size of an image and can potentially bring your image size from 400 KB to 150 KB or less, which is ideal for a web image. The image optimization tool that I use is entirely free. It is called Kraken.io. I have left the link in the description. This is best for manual optimization. Whenever I want to upload an image to my website, I will first optimize it before I upload the image. But if you already have tons of images on your site, then you don't need to waste time optimizing your images one by one. I recommend that you use a WordPress plugin called Imagify. It can optimize your images automatically and it's a total time saver. The fourth tip is to serve your images in WebP format. If you Google what WebP is, it is a new image format made to serve images faster on the internet and Google is the one who developed this. Now there's nothing more that you need to do if you have installed the Imagify plugin on your website. It is basically a flip of a switch. All you need to do is to log into your WordPress dashboard and under settings, that's Imagify. And once you click on Imagify, you'll see a page like this. Scroll down all the way to optimization. Check this box and this box, and you have your images on your website serve as WebP format. So if you hit my advice and do all these four things for your images, I'm pretty sure it would drastically speed up your site speed. Now let's go to the fonts. Here's what you need to understand. By default, font styles are not hosted on your web host. Your web host will need to retrieve your selected font style from elsewhere, and in most cases, from Google Fonts. So if you have multiple font styles on your site, your web host will need to send multiple requests to retrieve different font styles from Google, which will cause a slower load time. This problem usually occurs when you're using a page builder like Elementor, Beaver Builder, or Trive Architect, or if you're using a WordPress team that uses multiple fonts. So just be aware of this issue. You can look over to the Pingdom tools to see what fonts are loading on your website. And if multiple fonts are loading, then you may want to look into how to reduce to only one font style for your website. Now here's the problem with themes. It can make or break your website. 
website and it causes a huge impact on your page loading speed. If you use a free theme, most likely if your fonts and images are optimized, it should generally load quickly because all free themes need to pass a certain standard to be listed on WordPress. But the problem with using free themes is that they leave little room for customization. And sometimes even if you pay for the premium version, you still can't customize the way you want your site to be. Now, another problem occurs. There are tons of premium themes out there. And the thing is the theme developers do not need to meet any standard before they sell their themes. It's totally unlike those free themes. So even if you like a free theme because it looks nice and it loads fast and you decide to purchase the paid version, you'll be surprised how quickly your page speed slows down the more you customize on a paid version. So I've tried and tested tons of premium themes and I've narrowed it down to only two themes that let you customize your site freely and it still loads quickly. And because I love these two themes so much, I'm actually a customer for both of them. The first theme I recommend you using is Generate Press. It is the same theme that I'm using for my website. It has a free version, but it's very restrictive in terms of customization. But once you pay for the premium version, anything you wish to customize, it is possible. And it loads super fast if you know how to use it. So I've actually created a mini course on personal branding that uses Generate Press to build a fast loading website. So if you're interested to get the Generate Press premium theme, you can use the link in the description to make the purchase. That's my affiliate link. And as a way to say thank you for using my link, I'm going to give you the mini course away to you for free. You just need to send me an email to this address once you have made the purchase. Now, the second theme I recommend is Astra. It is similar to Generate Press. It is fast and you can customize the way you want it to look but it's a little expensive and it is also a little more user-friendly than Generate Press, in my opinion. And if you want to get this team, you can use the link below as well and send me an email after that. I'll be happy to walk you through to build your website with Astra. So that's the tip for site speed on Teams. The next tip I have for you is... <laughs> Don't use too many plugins. We love functionality, but the more plugins you have, the slower your website will be because different plugins will have different functionalities that will add on to your script loading time and it all happened in the background. You wouldn't know what is causing the load time to unless you know a little bit about CSS and JavaScript. So my recommendation is to have not more than 10 plugins, especially if your site is not an e-commerce site. You don't need so many plugins. You just need to use them most efficiently. So if you want to know what plugins I use for my site, take a look at the video description. I've listed them now below. And just compare your site to mine and try to determine what is necessary and what is not. And if you're not sure, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to help. So if you have done all the optimizations that we have discussed earlier, installing caching on your site will accelerate the performance and speed dramatically. Now, what caching does is that your web host will create a replicated version of your website on the front end, ready to serve the data straight to a web browser whenever required instead of loading it every time there is a request. This will prevent your web host from being overloaded and it will allow your web host to have more resources to allocate to somewhere else where it needs. So the use of caching will definitely improve the site speed. So there are a lot of caching plugins out there. Some are free, but the one that I use for most of my site is WP Rocket. They are one of the best in the industry and I like them for their user friendliness and the number of features they have. And they are not very expensive in my opinion. If your focus is to speed up your website, you may want to consider this. And from time to time, they will have discounts and you can rest assured that the link that I provided below in the description gives you the most discounts. So if you don't have a caching plugin or you are thinking of changing it, you definitely want to check out WP Rocket. Finally, we'll talk about web hosting. As I said, hosting should be the final frontier for you to optimize for speed. If all the optimizations earlier are adequately done and you still don't see the results you desire, then the final thing you need to do is to change your web host. I have gone a long way to testing many web hosting providers from the lowest price tier like Bluehost, Hostgator to the more premium ones. But I've identified two that are user friendly and they perform very well in terms of speed. The first is SiteGround where I'm hosting most of my sites there now. Their support is top notch and whenever you have any problems, they are there to solve it for you. So I've never had any issues that cannot be solved by them, especially when it comes to transferring web hosts or if my site is down. So if you'd like to check out SiteGround, you can use the link below. This site that I have is hosted on SiteGround and as you can see, the loading time is 760 milliseconds for a page that has a size of 339.6 KB, which in my opinion is relatively fast. And because they have an in-house caching and optimization plugin called the SG Optimizer, it makes it so much easier for anyone to optimize their site without installing a bunch of
Search Optimization Tools. Now, if you want to take it up a notch, let me show you this. This is my website hosted on WPX Hosting and just take a look at the time it takes for the web browser to connect with the web host. It is almost seven times faster than SiteGround based on this data here. And the thing is, the size of this web page is a little bigger than the one hosted on SiteGround. So the performance of WPX Hosting without a shadow of a doubt is better than SiteGround. But it's a little more expensive than SiteGround. But if you really want to take your site speed up a notch, you might want to consider using WPX Hosting it can dramatically speed up the loading time of your site. But remember, the performance rating of your site has little to do with the loading time. You gotta make those optimizations I said earlier to improve your site performance. <laughs> Finally, as promised, I want to give you one bonus tip for you if you want your website to have a 90 plus rating on Google Site Speed and an A performance rating on Pingdom Tools. My recommendation to you is to reduce the usage of page builders as much as possible like Elementor and stuff. I know they are very fun to use, it is just drag and drop and if you hate designing with the WordPress editor, page builder seems to be the solution for you. But they are the main cause for all site speed problems, believe it or not. Now I say to reduce and not completely eradicate them. So here's my recommendation. Use a page builder only when you are designing a lead capture page and nothing else because since the creation of Gutenberg and its add-ons, it is much simpler for you to design your homepage using the WordPress editor. Never use a page builder on a blog post, homepage or any other pages. But when it comes to capturing leads and connecting it to your autoresponder, the Gutenbergs fall short on this matter but they are constantly improving so in the near future, you may never need to use a page builder anymore. So this homepage that I have on my website is built with just WordPress editor using the Gutenberg blocks. And if you want to know how I did it, you can check out the video right here. It has a 95 rating on Google PageSpeed Insights and an A performance on Pingdom Tools. So how do you like the tips that I've shared with you? Notice I never mentioned anything about lazy loading of images because WordPress has this feature installed in it by default. So if you're using an extra plugins or lazy loading, you can remove them forever because they are of no use anymore. Anyway, I hope that the tips I shared with you will help you improve your site speed and hopefully get an A rating on Google PageSpeed Insights or any other site speed testing tools. Do check out the list of tools I recommend in the video description. Those are what I use to make my site have a great performance. And can you do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button below and leave a comment as well because it will really help this video reach out to other people who are struggling with site speed. Also, if you like videos that talk about starting an online business and everything related to it, then do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification. I post about two videos per week to help you grow your online business. Do check out the next video if you have more time and all the best to you, take care.